you need to choose to do better. And then you need to figure out why you think this is okay. Is being a bully, that's who you want to be in this world? Mm -hmm. Or you mess around and hurt your kids because they don't comply with your bullying? Mm -hmm. You know, telling them that I, I, y'all scatter me. Who's not scared of somebody running around with a gun? On June 18th, 2024, Candace Anderson appeared before Magistrate Fink for arraignment on one count of assault and battery and one count of felony assault with a dangerous weapon. Ms. Anderson stood mute and a not guilty plea was entered on her behalf. Magistrate Fink set bond in the amount of $5,000. A probable cause conference was set for June 27th, 2024 in Judge Simpson's court. Court calls case people versus Candace Anderson. Prosecuting attorney Morgan Barroso on behalf of the people. Uh -huh. Cancel this fell out. I don't know what it fell out of. Thank you, Your Honor. Assistant Public Defender Kassan Bulbasi on behalf of Candace Anderson. To my right, Ms. Anderson, could you go ahead and state your full name for the record? Candace Anderson. Thank you. Your Honor, today is the date and time set for a PCC. At this time, we would be re re respectfully requesting to set for exam. Um, folks, hold on a second. The individual in the wheelchair should have that first seat in the back. It's designed for that. So that space is designed for you right there. Got it? Perfect. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. We would be respectfully requesting to set for a preliminary exam at this time. And discovery is complete? Yes. Yes. People have their witnesses available tonight. We'll do our best. Preliminary examination in person, July 9th, 2024, 9 a.m. That's before Judge Burke. Judge Burke. Bond continued. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. On July 9th, 2024, Ms. Anderson appeared in front of Judge Burke, where she entered a plea of no contest to one count of misdemeanor assault and battery. A pre-sentence investigation was ordered, and Ms. Anderson was ordered to appear before Judge Washington for sentencing on August 26, 2024. I will call the case of the state of Michigan versus Candace Anderson, case number 24B1138. Personally, death for the people. Assistant, oh, Assistant Public Defender Allison Muller here on behalf of Candace Anderson will be seated here to my right. Ms. Anderson, Ms. Ms. Anderson, can you state your name, please? Candace Anderson. We are for something here. Yes, Your Honor. Did you have to review the report with your client? I have, Your Honor. Um, as far as the the factual part of it, we have no corrections, modifications, or deletions. I would like to um, address the recommendation. Thank you, Ms. McDuffie. Your Honor, I um, there's a lot here. Uh, there, um, I know that our complaining witness is present. Um, is the court is in receipt of the document that uh, we received from him as well? I am, and I've read all of the pages and every sentence of that report. Uh, I am very familiar with it. Thank you. Okay. So I um, I I don't even know what else to say. I think honestly, um, uh, beyond that, except that Miss um. <clears throat> this would be disturbing enough if this were like a first offense because it would still Absolutely. be a very, yeah, it, it, and it's, and it's clearly not. And it's one thing when someone, um, you know, sort of, uh, believes that they're being told what they did and, and, and thinks that that's not the person I want to be, but not really getting this is familiar behavior. This is, in some ways, frequent behavior. Um, we just have a reference to the previous case that happened to involve a firearm, but there are several other assaults of incidents that weren't even, you know, mentioned in Agent Johnson's report. And even the prior probation that she was on was violated um, with some of those things. I don't, I, I don't comprehend. I know that we get to this place so often, and especially when defendants are in person and fully realizing the consequences that probably await them because they're in person 
And it is that time when everything spills out about all of the consequences that they might um, have to suffer with their work, their employment, their children, their, and it, it just baffles me how none of those consequences are considered before they decided to act in the way that they did. This was not, uh, everything seems so, so much of a choice, so much of an intentional choice. And there was every opportunity to not behave in the way that Ms. Anderson did in this incident. Um, so we are now faced with not having to meet those consequences because of concerns of family and home and other obligations. The people that are threatened with firearms and death threats and comments about body bags, the people impacted by this behavior have those concerns too. Not to mention in that immediate moment, the concern for their own life. And to hear all of that reduced to this was a private family conversation. As if I, I, I just, I don't comprehend, I, well, I do comprehend it. Actually, I think the problem is that we all comprehend it and Ms. Anderson probably doesn't. So I don't want to go on too long, but um, as I started out, this is not the first offense. This is not the first time. This is not a situation where, um, temp not that this is ever an excuse, but this is not a case where tempers flared and someone's emotions got the best of them and they and they might have been in it under the influence and didn't appreciate the nature of their actions. These exact actions have been demonstrated before with an entire term of probation in this court years ago. I don't understand and I never will understand how we are sitting here today with a similar set of circumstances, if not worse, quite frankly, after that time. And in that previous case, the Ms. Anderson's child was in the car when that firearm was pointed at somebody. So there's just an entire other layer of the same children that we need to be concerned about today in terms of her not wanting to go to jail, to need to be there to support them. They are exposed to this behavior. What are they supposed to think? I'm going to stop and um, ask the court if it's prepared to hear from Mr. Wilson. I am prepared. Sir, if you can please unmute. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I've never had the pleasure of speaking with uh, Ms. Duffy. Um, what she said is the whole cake, the icing. That's exactly my sentiments. I, I don't know if Candace can hear us at this moment, but that is she my can't, exact. She, she can hear you, sir. She can hear you very well. And in addition to that, I don't know if you know, and it's completely up to you and you can remain off screen if you so choose but your camera is not showing. I don't know if you want your camera to show or not. It is your choice. You are not, you don't have to turn it on. Good morning. I'm sorry. That's okay. So, um, uh, Mrs. Duffy's, um, uh, perception of this is my exact perception. Um, this was not a personal family issue that happened. This is something that my sister created. And she's upset. She was completely surprised that I showed up to the first hearing, which I don't understand why um, she threatened to murder me over three different occasions aside of the gun situation. And I had nothing to do with this situation, ma'am. Um, she disrespected our grandmother to the fullest extent. And my grandmother asked me to stay out of it. She said, don't say anything to her. She's looking for a fight. I didn't say anything to her. Four days later, after the incident, I receive a text message. Uh, F you, F y'all. Y'all can die with her. She can die with her husband. And, I, and mind you, I didn't even say anything to her. I didn't call her. I didn't text her. I wasn't talking bad about her. I didn't say anything to her. I stayed out of it. I work a full nine to five job. And she texts me at 2 p.m. Uh, with all these vulgarities. So I'm just I don't know where this is coming from. So I called my brother and my brother stated that they had got into an incident. And I still wasn't I'm like, did my name come up? And he said, no, I still am unclear how I was in this situation to be put in a body bag before the situation happened. Me and my sister were on a good page. I, I, I take I help um not even help take her care of her. I wouldn't say that, but more so I'm there for my nieces. I'm a good uncle to my nieces. I'm a good brother to my sister. So she doesn't understand or comprehend. Maybe she doesn't comprehend the severity of this, of threatening. She threatened to put me in a body bag. Then she's 
came over and was yelling in my grandmother's face, asking if she had life insurance on me <clears throat> because of something that she created. Nobody put their hands on her. Nobody said that they were going to do anything to her. This is all in Candace's head. Like she, and then this is ongoing, ongoing drama. Even now, she's telling people, don't talk to me. And oh, he came to court on me. And, and that's not my brother. And like, what are, we're blood. We came out of the same woman. And all of this for something that Candace created. This is everything that this is happening. Candace created this. She cussed out our grandmother and wanted my me and my brother to be on her side with that. There, she's talking about things. Oh, she take her husband off. Like, and, and it's not even that our grandma chose her husband. Like, as an adult, you have to grow up and realize that everybody has their own life. We are not our grandmother's children. My grandma stepped in because we had an an, an absent mother. She was there, but she wasn't an attentive mother. But that don't Candace is twenty nine years old. We have to let those things go. We have to let that go. She has two children that she that that she needs to be concerned about their welfare and being a better mother than our mother was. But creative family drama, threatening to kill her brothers, like and 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 let's say hypothetically she did kill off her brothers. What would that resolve? What would that resolve? So it's it's ongoing and it's getting worse and worse. Yes, me and my sister have got into altercations. Yes, that's what families do. But it's never been to the extent of I'll murder y'all. I'll put you in a body bag. Y'all some pussies. Y'all scared of me coming around, flaunting her gun. And I remind you, Judge Washington, over something that she created. So I'm going to leave it there. What Miss Duffy said, I'm just as baffled as her. And... I, I just I, some type of um, mental evaluation needs to be addressed. And I wanted to continue the no contact order. Period. Thank, thank you, sir. Ms. Muller. Um, I appreciate Mr. Wilson's statement. Um, and I think everything that Ms. McDuffie said rings true. Um, I think and I've spoken with Ms. Anderson several times. Um, she was concerned after talking with probation. She realized it didn't go well. Um, I think she regrets not taking more accountability and giving a more um, open assessment. Obviously, it's very concerning what happened. Um, when I've spoken with Ms. Anderson, um, and this isn't this isn't an excuse. I'm just trying to understand where she was, kind of why something like this could occur. Um, and I did send documentation to the court about um, her her toddler, who's um, outside right now, does have pretty significant health issues. Around the time of this offense, her daughter had. She had knew that at the time she did this. Honor, I and I know she knew that because I put her in jail the last time she was before me and told her very clearly not to come back. And instead, she's back while making threats and telling the people that she has threatened that they're pussies for calling the court in. Ma'am, I, I, I can see the text. There's a text message. I have the text message. <laughs> So I think you better recount your statements. I'm giving you an opportunity to do that is why I'm telling you this. Because she is not telling you the full story. She is very aware that she had a gun the last time she came into my courtroom. She is very aware that I gave her an opportunity on probation. She is very aware that she violated that probation that time and ended up in custody. So apparently jail is not that serious for her because she's back here now and I see it very differently. I see everything that Ms. McDuffie said, but I also see a continuing pattern of taunting and threatening her family members. So it's going to take a lot for me to understand the frame of mind that she was in. Now you may proceed. Your Honor. I understand and I, I agree with you. I'm struggling also to understand. And so I only mentioned that and she had had a miscarriage it, as a way of saying, I, I think there is something going on maybe um, maybe mentally here. I'm not sure. I, I think that part of the recommendation, I think obviously full agreement with, I think there needs to be some kind of help. She needs counseling. We need, need to understand what's going on, what's causing this, because as the court said, this isn't typical behavior. This isn't, you know, when you're on probation, you already know what's happening to kind of escalate behavior in this way. So I agree with that. 
Um, and I, I share the same concerns. I just wonder, as I do in many cases, if the 30 days in jail will, or it could be the full, of course, as well, what the jail time will serve for her or for her brother, who is the victim in this case, or her other family members. Um, so that's my only concern or just questioning. I don't know what more can be done, but I, I do, you know, the probation last time didn't work. I hope the probation here will work. I hope something will click for Ms. Anderson. She knows what she stands to lose. Um, she said that her and her grandmother are the only ones who can care for her daughter. She knew that when this happened, as your honor said, um, that should have been her top priority. Um, I think if it wasn't, it is now. I think she needs help. I hope she gets that as part of this recommendation. Um, and so I would argue against the jail time only for the reason being, I don't know what it will change in this matter, but all the other recommendations, giving up all firearms, absolutely getting the mental health that she needs. Um, I think, and Mr. Wilson kind of alluded to, you know, maybe the way they grew up and, and that's not an excuse for any defendant, maybe past family traumas, but it sounds like there's a lot here, maybe things she went through and now she's creating the same circumstances that maybe even she grew up with. Um, and so that would be my only request if there, is any leniency to reduce or hold this jail sentence in advance so that she can get the help that I think she probably needs. Ms. Anderson, what, what would you like to say, ma'am? You, you see how I feel at this point. Yes, um, I really want to apologize. Um, just was going through a lot. My daughter had surgery. She um, had her tongue was took out. And um, I woke up and she had like a blood, like blood coming out her nose and her mouth. So she had a um, blood but, um a blood clot that had us, so we had to go through surgery again. So it was a really hard time for me. This all happened in April, all in one time. And we, we get out the hospital, my friend does help me a lot. And then I turned around like a week later and I had a miscarriage, probably due to so much stress. And I was just going through a lot. I didn't mean to take anything out of anyone. I would never harm my family or put my children in harm's way. But you wouldn't put your children in harm's way. We've seen you do that before already. And this baby that has the, the disabilities, that's the baby that you were in jail, you were pregnant then and in jail with that baby, right? Uh, I believe, yeah, I believe so, mm -hmm. yes. And you're telling me you wouldn't harm anyone when you walk into a kitchen with a gun and you don't want to put your children in harm's way. Um, you, you are the harm. I don't, I'm trying to work on myself. How? I've been taking my medicine. I take Lexapro. I've been taking my anxiety medicine and my, my depression medicine. I just have a lot going on. It's, it's hard. You recall when you were here last time? What did I What did I tell you? I'm, I'm aware. Um, when I say don't come back? Yes. I specifically remember you because you were one of the first people I had ever had to put in custody. Sorry. And you, you, in that particular case, you were in relationship with someone who had a wife. You find them, pull out a gun on them. Did that not happen? Yes. And so you apparently think that threatening people with weapons is the thing to do. No, ma'am. No, obviously you would, or you wouldn't be here again with this same charge, ma'am. And you had plenty of time to think about it. You had days. This was a matter of days of you taunting your family, making your family feel as though you might kill them. I'm sure your brother has all kinds of emotions going on right now, seeing his sister in this position, and he has to write letters to a judge, talk to a prosecutor so he can feel safe from being around you. So now he's got that trauma that he's got to deal with for the rest of his life because you are creating this circumstance. Because apparently you didn't learn a thing the last time. And your attorney's saying that 30 days is not going to do anything for you. I think she's right. But only because, in reality, I don't know how you got here with just a misdemeanor assault and battery. I think you're not going to learn a thing until you spend some quality time in jail. Understand this question? 
you try around trying to punk your family with a gun who does that people who kill their family members do that that's who does that so i feel like i need to protect them from you because if i don't you turn out to be one of those stories where you've gone in and killed up a whole household and your kids too then i'm the bad guy Anything else before I impose sentence, ma'am? Um, Your Honor, I understand um, all of the concerns present today and the safety concerns. I would ask that um, the court is considering jail um, a shorter term with release just to a home confinement GPS tether. Um, or if Ms. Anderson can get some time, I believe she's been doing so, but now she's worried that maybe she hasn't filled out all the necessary documentation if her daughter needs any kind of care care in the you know immediate future that that someone else has the authority to bring her in for her to get that care. So I guess it's a either or or two part request that she is going to turn herself in that she'd be given um, maybe time a short span to do so or that she either receive limited jail time with only release to a home confinement. Both of those requests are denied. Ms. Anderson, it is the sentence of this court that you serve 93 days in a Washtenaw County jail, credit for the one day you have served. You're going to serve 30 days immediately. If I had more time on this sentence, I'd give you more time than that, but I don't because I just don't understand. I, I, I can't fathom you being the person that you are right now and you come before me asking me to do something to help your child. I think helping your child looks very different than what's actually going to happen. Because what, what, kind, what, what kind of mother does these things to their grandmother and to their family? The, the grandmother incident, the child was present, right? Who, who does this? The balance is to be served, uh, to be suspended. You're on probation for 24 months. Fines and court costs in this particular case for a total of $400, no, $525. $30 per month probation oversight fee. You're to meet with probation when and where directed, including any and all home visits. You're to make earnest efforts to maintain legitimate employment, no assaultive or threatening behavior towards anyone, not your grandmother, not your brothers, not anyone. You're to have no contact with DeAndre Wilson whatsoever. He wants no contact with you. No contact with my daughter. And like pick her up. Just that's still okay. He can make contact through a third party to take your daughter, but not with you. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. he calls her phone. Yeah. Okay. And you know, this thing about the trauma in your family and how that might be affecting you. Your brother went through the same trauma, but he doesn't treat other family members like this. That's a you thing. That's not a PTSD, that's not childhood trauma. That's you making these choices. And maybe you're very angry about the way your life is going and the life choices you're making right now. But these are your life choices. You need to choose to do better. Maybe thinking about this will get you in a different place. Because I think the last time I put you in custody, it was only like 10 days. You have 30 days to think about it this time. And I hope it truly makes a difference for you. I am absolutely shocked and appalled to see who you are being after the last time I saw you. That was about three and a half years ago. So I clearly remember you very well. And I haven't pulled a file. No going to his place of residence or his place of employment. You are to complete an updated mental health assessment with the mental health provider and sign a release of information. You are to surrender all weapons to the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Department within 24 hours of your release from custody. Any positive alcohol 
or drug tests will result in you getting services through community corrections, um, outpatient programming, and or additional jail time. You will be responsible for random drug and alcohol tests as requested by the court, probation, police, or any treatment provider for a minimum of two times per month. No use or possession of alcohol, marijuana, medical or recreational, drug paraphernalia, no being in the presence of anyone using them, no use or possession of any firearm, firearm components, ammunition, or other dangerous weapons. And I want you to write a letter that goes to the probation department apologizing to your brother apologizing to both your brothers for that matter, apologizing to your grandmother and apologizing to your kids. Yes, ma'am. And then you need to figure out why you think this is okay. Is being a bully, that's who you wanna be in this world? Mm -hmm. Or you mess around and hurt your kids because they don't comply with your bullying? Mm -hmm. You know, telling them that I, I, y'all scatter me. Who's not scared of somebody running around with the gun? Normal people are. That doesn't make you bad because you're running around with a gun. It makes you a bad human being. Not badass. Those are different things. Why do you want to be that anyway? You had days to think about this. So you sitting here telling me that that's not what you want? I don't buy it. It's what you did the last time when you pulled up on somebody. We're just all lucky you haven't hurt somebody in that moment, that time when you want to show the world who you are. I hope you change that. Because otherwise, you're going to have children whose mom is in custody behind bars for the rest of their life when you mess around and hurt somebody. So please figure it out. We had a similar conversation last time. So I'm not convinced that it's going to make a difference for you. But at some point, I hope that it does. You sit here and I look at you and I know you can do better. So you need to figure out why you're not doing better or why you think this is the way you should be. Yes, ma'am. I'll see you back here after you get out. I'm gonna see you in about 15 days after that. I hope you get it this time, Ms. Anderson. Please go with the officer. It's about okay. kids. To my daughter. Text your daughter. Is it okay? She's not in the house. Yeah, you need to go with the dog. Is that your partner? Yes. Thank you. 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 If you want that to go out to them, we'll get that to them. But right now. So you can take it out to them. No, I can't take it to them. No, no, no you you're not leaving the courtroom. You want to say, can I take it? Take it with me so I can. You can take it with you, sure. You won't be able to use it. You'll be able to get numbers out of it. Okay, so that you can call me. Thank you, Thank you. Court records indicate that Ms. Anderson was given credit for time served and the remaining jail sentence was suspended. Ms. Anderson will be on supervised probation until September 2026. We really appreciate you and would like to thank you for watching. If you are not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. It's completely free and we will never ask you for money.